Angie Martinez in Real Life Podcast. This episode and conversation is powered by Duce. So it's Real Life is the name of the podcast in Real yeah, Life. So yeah. we talk about Real Life. Yeah. Thank no, you. I remember from the show. That's why I wanted to do it. Okay, good. Yeah, I remember. I listened. By the way, I've been posting clips from my show, from my show, my when I was on uh, your show. Yeah, they're so funny. I really love really every you. time you come on. Oh, thank you. It's rare when people are comfortable, like in their own yeah. skin, and just have a conversation. Yeah, like, yeah. Right. You don't have to work. You could just. Yeah. You can engage. Yeah. I'm just like, I oh, know. cool. You're comfortable in your skin. That's awesome. So you said you were gonna come. I was. I was thrilled. I was like, oh, good. I She's know. a talker. She knows how to talk, communicate, share. Yeah. I just enjoy conversation oh like i just mean because I, I like it when that's why i was so excited to do your your podcast because i was like oh man she would be fun to talk to one thing i think you and i well let me say let me let me ease into that first i will ask you off top because this is a thing that came up in one of the episodes is uh, jay balvin was on and he said that he asked his team he just newly started asking his team how happy are you today on a yeah. scale of one to ten yeah. It's like an easy way to check in with people, right? Yeah. So if I ask you that, Kelly, today, how happy are you on a scale of one to ten? In real life. In in real life, <laughs> yeah. I'm I emotionally and emotionally I'm like an eleven. Like I'm really, really, really good. Like physically and mentally, I'm like kind of like around a seven because I've had like, you know, you have like your work schedule. It can be like this. Yeah. It's just been like a crazy crazy few weeks but um but you're catching me right when i'm about to have a couple days off so i'm excited about that so you're happy. but no emotionally like i'm so great and it's so funny that he does that because i do this thing it's like my new thing now where i'm on vacation uh -huh. all the time right. i just like psych myself i'm like i'm on vacation i just like you so i showed up here <laughs> this is like an excursion on my vacation I love that. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. so we no but that's what i do with people like i work with too i'm like I'm like, how's vacation going? Like we've been, we joke about it all the time in like the glam room, like, and, and with the team and crew at, at the show. Cause I'm like, we gotta just imagine we're always on vacation. Cause we are, we have a really cool job. You have we, a great you know, job. Yeah. yeah. But like, an 11. physically, nobody, 11. I've never, nobody has given that answer. You know why though? I've had a really rough, like couple years. It's yeah. taken a minute and like therapy to get there. Yeah. Like, so. Um, what is so, the, what is the number one main thing that has gotten you through that and to an 11. You do not have to attend an argument, like every argument that comes your way. Like my, my therapist is like, you don't have to attend every time someone invites you to an argument. And that's like, you know, every time somebody, they play you and they try and say something, I'm like, mm. and, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to not attend that. And I'm going to, I'm going to move on. That's from that. good. So that, Give that me really examples. helped me. Give me examples. Oh God. Well, there's in work or in personal life, um, like, you know, divorce is really hard. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's, even though you love each other, like intensely, right. For a moment, it, things get real crazy and divorce and like, you know, just kind of the worst versions of yourself can kind of come out mm -hmm. of people sometimes. So, and it's like, no one's going to win. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody, it's just like this, like nobody's yeah. going to win. So it's yeah, just yeah. like, no, nah, I'm not going to attend this one. So I'm going to let that go. And like fights, and, like bickering, argue, arguing. Is that what you I mean? I know, or? just like any kind of, because I feel like too, over two years and like even becoming a mother, I don't know if you've experienced this, like perspective and like relevance of things. Like, it's just like, mm. why, why do we let some things blow up? And I think I unfortunately have had a lot of people or too many than I would like um, have passed away, like at like our ages and younger. So I think it's very eye opening. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that's it. It's just like okay, I'm not going to attend that today. You can you can be in that world all on your own, Kelly. I am the same way I stole. Are you happy? How happy are you? I'm one to ten. I am going to steal. I am not going to attend that today. <laughs> no, I look, I got I am, it from my therapist. I am, so I am unable to attend. I literally I was I was I was texting my therapist. No, I RSVP no. I am not attending. yeah. <laughs> RSVP no one. <laughs> um no, yeah, I unsubscribe. <laughs> That's um another thing That's one so of my good. friends does on a text exchange, just like a bunch of us, they'll just be like unsubscribe. Um no, it is. It's just because I think you're not only helping yourself, but yeah. you're helping that person. Because maybe that person just, I, I think a lot of people with trauma too, like generational trauma, I think a lot of us, 
we'll just, we don't know how to live without it. Mm. We don't know how to like exist without some kind of drama happening. I, I, yeah. Are you that, that, you, you no, not me. Been. No, no. Oh God. I mean, maybe, you, maybe I've be? been that when I was younger, right? When you're figuring stuff out, definitely like my twenties, like, um, and I think it's, I mean, I think a lot of us fall prey to it. Like generational trauma is a thing. Like, you oh, know, you sure. can't, yeah, you can't like escape it sometimes. But I think those red flags that that's, that's, that's why you have to do the work. Yeah. That's why you have to do the work to notice like, Ooh, I'm not going to go down there again. I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. What is the big work that you had to do? Cause we all have like a thing. Mine was like, well, I have a few things. We all have a few things. Right? Yeah. But like trust is a thing. Trust and is like, a major thing. And me burying, like if I tend to bury, like, so mm -hmm. if I'm, instead of dealing over here, I'll go and work hard on this and, Oh, busy bee. B busy bee. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tend to do yep. that, which is looking away from things or yeah. making excuses for people because I tend to be like an empathetic person. So I could always kind of say, oh, that person's a dick, but probably yeah. because they went through X. You justify. So I justify. Yeah. And make excuses for people. We are, because what you just said is me. <laughs> what do you do? Um, we are targets for narcissists, by the way. So yes. that can be really difficult because they can be very charming, very manipulative and you know, work environments, relationships, whatever it is, um, people kind of see that about, I, I, I think, and, um, I think the work though that you said is the busy bee thing, like to come back on that is you have sometimes, to have some of that. Sometimes you need that. Like, okay. Like, so during the global pandemic and then also going through a divorce, like I was so grateful for being busy mm. because like, that was a lot like with kids, not, you know, zoom school and like, divorce happening and like trying to, literally a, it was our first season of the talk show and we're trying to get it off the ground it was just a lot yeah. and so i think being busy sometimes is very helpful um but then it was important like this last summer like i took off and i literally probably pissed off so many people but i i was like i'm not doing a thing mm. i was like i i was busy long enough i gave myself enough you know grace to just kind of okay i'm not ready i'm not ready i'm not ready and then i knew i was going to have space in this summer and I knew my kids, you know, we split my ex and I, they three weeks with him, three weeks with me, three weeks with him, three weeks with me. And that's a long time to it not have really your babies. Is. But it actually ended up being very helpful for me because it also gives you as a mom, you get this having yes. that me time. Yes. So like that me time was transformative. Mm -hmm. Like I came back from vacation, like refueled, like ready to go. I felt like sometimes we always run on empty and then you have nothing to give people and then yeah. you're depleted and I, f I feel I feel like I was busy enough because it was very helpful to be busy because there was a lot happening and just getting dumped on. And then when you finally take that time and then you deal with it, you know, you do the work. And I did that in the summer. I, yeah. You know, and I you figure stuff out, not just about other people, by the way, about yourself, because even you saying that, like, we have to change that. What? Ch justifying people's actions. Oh, yeah. I'm already changing that. Yeah, me too. I'm That's what I'm saying. way less now. Me too. You want to know why? You know what? You want to know what I went, what I just went through that triggered that for yeah. me? Um, okay, so this is what I did. It was one of my things I did because, like you, no, I grew up no father. Yeah. My father uh, disappeared when I was 10. The last time I saw him was at my grandmother's funeral, his mom. I was very close with her. She died. He was on drugs. Mm. After she died, he kind of just disappeared. Years later, I had heard that he died, uh, which was not surprising to me because he was a heroin addict. And I thought, oh, that makes sense. I mean, Dang. years later, like I was older, like my 30s, I heard he died. I was like, wow, that makes sense. But I never was angry. I had never had anger. I never felt, I always felt bad for him. I always made these like, yeah, he's troubled. You're an oh, empath. Yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, I tried to like, I gave him grace. I gave him this. I made excuses. What was the other words you used before? I gave, I made, um, you just justify justify the actions. I yeah, justify yeah. the actions. Right. So then, um, about a couple of years ago, I found that he was in fact not dead. What? Just a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I found that he was not dead. Crazy. Then about maybe six, maybe eight months ago, I finally get around to like making the call because I had been in a car accident. My life was like crazy for a couple of years, COVID. Yeah. I just didn't get to it. And I yeah. wasn't sure if I wanted to open my life up. Right. I have a great life. I have a great family. I just was like, eh, I don't know. I finally do that. And the man is, man is married. The wife doesn't even know that he was once married to my mother for one year. She did not know that I existed. She did not know that he used to be a drug addict. <laughs> He's living a completely different life. Wow. And was not interested in uh, reconnecting. He was not. 
Now, as a this is what I find interesting. Okay. Like and and with my father, I I was like this too. I was like I always felt sorry for him because I'm like you're missing out. And how would you like you have a, a kid? I have kids. Like you know what I'm saying? How do you not want to be? Could you picture? No, I cannot imagine. Yeah, not wanting However, to be a part of your. This is something Kelly Rowland and I talked about. The other Kelly, and she was like, you know, he's. Just, she's like, she thought about this when she reconnected with her father that maybe he just is not ready or capable. Or doesn't want to go back to that place. Wherever he is now is not willing to go to that place. So somebody like my father, who was a drug addict, who did have mm. all this past that he's clearly hiding from, is not at his age willing to... I'm not saying... Yeah. This is not justifying. This no, no, is no, just yeah. understanding. But then what that made me do was like, oh, I've been justifying for this man my whole life. Um, maybe he's not troubled and all, get, deserving of all the grace. Maybe he's just an asshole. Yeah. You know, you know what? So then it, it was like, yeah. Th then I started looking at everything else going on. I'm like, ah, that, that person's, you know, not in pain. That person's an asshole. And so I started releasing mm -hmm. a little bit of, of doing that. Does that make sense? Like, oh, yeah. 100%. It's so funny that you just said deserving. So Brene Brown, I don't know if you follow her at all. I love Brene. Okay, I love Brene Brown. Okay, I'm, trying to, I'm here and being so, vulnerable with yeah, you right I, yeah, now, Kelly. I, I am, I'm escaping my shame. Um, <laughs> that's like a real thing of shame. And so, um, no, I love one thing that she said that really stuck with me in this interview that she did, I believe it was. Um, but she said, not everyone is deserving of your story. Mm. Not like, And I was like, at first I was just like, what? And then I started thinking about it and I was like, Oh, because sometimes I feel, and this is how, I don't know, I'm not projecting, this is how I feel in my world, is, and my father passed away too, but it was like, and P, actually, I literally, I literally was just asked like two days ago by a friend, a really close friend, mm -hmm. and their parent just died and, and or is, is close to dying. That's what it is. Oof. And it's their father. And, and, you know, he was like, did you have regrets not, you know, reconciling like before, you know, he passed away? And I was like, no, like, and I, I don't, I don't feel that loss either because one, you try, you know, you try and you try and you try and then, it, and it just doesn't work out. And it's, that's where not everyone deserves your story. Not everyone deserves that opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. cause it's like, you've already given it. Like I'd already given it several times. And even my friend that I was talking to, I'm like, you've given like multiple opportunities for this French, for this, you know, relationship to mend and everyone deserves a great dad and everyone deserves that moment. And that's why we crave it. Mm. It's because you want that. You see it with other people and you're like, Oh man, I, I deserve that. Like, why can't I have that? That's so cool. But like, not everyone gets that. Mm. And like, and, and at the end for me, it was like, man, you hurt me so much. Like it was just constant, like mm. one thing after the other. So it was like, it, it's okay that you weren't ever prepared or ready to be my father. But at the end of the day, it was like, I don't, you don't deserve this anymore because like, cause I am worthy and I'm worthy of having someone that deserves my story and deserves mm. my time. And that's when I really underststood like what she was talking about or how I filtered it. Shoot. I don't know yeah. if that's how it's supposed Whatever to be, but works. yeah, but, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. It, it's crazy though. I feel like there's a lot of us and like our generation that was, was, that we were just fatherless. Like, I don't know where they all went, like some island. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't Why know did where. they think that like, was okay? literally, Like literally the show I just shot in my show, like we just did a whole episode and like literally there were like three people on the couch going, oh yeah, I didn't grow up with a father either. I'm like, how do we all not grow up with a dad? Like, I was like, yeah. this is weird. <laughs> and we're all like 80, you know, 70 to 80s kids. And I was just like, yeah. what? But I don't know. I don't feel, I feel like, I, I don't know if you agree, but I feel like when, when I was younger, I never, I was like you, I was like, oh yeah, I just didn't, that just wasn't happening. I think it was whenever I had a kid is when I got deeply sad about it. Cause I was like, wait, how, like now I get it. Cause I'm a parent. I'm like, whoa, like how, how I in the world could kid. you have not cared about me? Like how, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Cause like, I could never do that to my kid, you know, yeah. that that's trippy. But in the end it's sad for them. They miss out. Yeah. You know, like, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I totally agree that. What do, what do you think the things, you know, because the thing about family and trauma and generation, like it, it, we carry that. We carry mm -hmm. what happened to us. We carry actually what happened to our parents. Generational. Who are carrying, yeah. yeah, right. So mm -hmm. what? how does it translate to for you, even in, I don't know, relationships, trust, all those things? Like what are the, what are the daddy issues for you that you have to get through? 
I think, I don't know. I mean, I, I think we, we're still always like working on it. Cause oh, so, I think, yeah. I mean, just forever. In, in, I think like, <laughs> and, and I don't know if that's a sad thing. I think before I'd make a joke about it and I'd be like, yeah, just still over here working on it. But I, mm. but I, I think that's okay. Cause that's like, whatever. It's a part of our story. It's not our only story, yeah. but it's a part of kind of who makes us who we are. Um, but I think relationships can be difficult. I was going to ask you like with dad problems, like mm -hmm. how does that affect your relationship with men? In general? Yeah, yeah. I, I literally, I just had this conversation with somebody else that, um, recently is getting divorced and I was just like, it's just hard. And also like, it's hard on the other person because there's two sides, right? Mm -hmm. And every, and those two sides come with their own level of generational trauma, you know, the yeah. stuff going on and, and it can be hard to, yeah. to for trust like you mentioned that earlier yeah. like trust issues that that's hard when the person that's supposed to love you most you know what i'm saying like in your parents like when the people who are supposed to be there for you the most mm -hmm. aren't then obviously in the back of your mind like anyone is capable of letting you down yeah like you know what i'm saying if and the one you're... that's supposed to love you most you're their yeah. seed like you know what i'm saying like and yeah. like so i think you learn that as a young at a young age i think what's hard and i don't know if you agree i Tell think me. what's hard the hardest thing for me in relationships is, and this is actually in a lyric and uh, a song I just your wrote. Song, but it's like, by the way, your songs are so good for these, like they're so good for these type of conversations. Oh, well, you're gonna love the next album. Oh, um, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, because, no, it's because of you. It was like, oh, that's my life. So, but yeah. it's so, oh, Kelly, it's, it's a so, lot of people's lives. It's a lot of people's lives. Yeah, it's, it's about breaking but, that cycle. But it's so good. You really cut into like what that experience feels like. Yeah, well, yeah. and a lot of it that I write, like some of it is metaphorical and some of it is very literal. Mm -hmm. um, but like in this recent one, this is in a, yeah, it's in a song I just wrote and it's like, it, it, for me, it's like, and I let me know what you think. Maybe okay, I don't think I'm me. wrong. Pour, put it on I me. don't think I'm wrong. Let's get it. I think <laughs> in a relationship, you know, any kind of relationship, friendship, love or whatever, family, it's like, it's like, I, I am aware that I don't need you, but I want you. Mm -hmm. Like, is that like, it's very simple what I just said, but can be very hard for people to swallow well, of like, like, just so you know, like, it's like, no, I don't, let's, I'm let's, not ever going to need down. you. Let's you know, like when people down. need you to need them. And it's like, I don't know. That's kind of, that's kind of manipulative to me. Like to, for, you know what I'm yes. saying? To push on me that I need you. Like I want you. Doesn't that mean way more that I want you in my life, but I don't need you. It because should. I feel like if someone needs you to be in their life, that's different from want and desire. Like, that's just like a necessity. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Like people, right. women back in the day, especially generational, like, like my mom, like whenever, like a lot of moms back in the day, like they needed like a, another a husband, income. A they needed another income. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of times people need another income. So you get married. There's different reasons for why you do things. But it's like, man, doesn't it mean the world to you? Like to say like. I want you. Like I choose you. Yeah. I don't need you. Like I want you here. Like, but not everybody's ready for that conversation. They're maybe. not. Yeah. Not the guy for you yeah. then. Yeah. Probably. Or not. not the friendship for me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's like it's just if that's not. I think that's my thing with the relationships in general, like across the board. Like it's like if you can't accept that, like that's how that's how I am, and I and I probably because of how I grew up. But it's like I think that that is a deeper love. For sure. I think that's a deeper level of friendship, a deeper level of trust, a deeper level of all of it is like that I don't, I, you you can't need me to need you. That's never going to happen, but I want you. I, I explored this a little bit in my first episode of this podcast about um, relationships being based in ego. Most, oh. most relationships are rooted in ego, like a possession of each other, what you do for <laughs> me, what I expect you to do for me. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know. Just wondering what you make of that or think about that. Man, I think ego is just, it's such a problem. It's okay to have, um, cause I guess it's dependent upon your true, like whatever you really believe ego. Cause not ego isn't bad. You want to have pride in yourself. You want to, confidence. you, you want to have confidence. You want to have the right amount. Right. Yeah. I guess. But like, boy, it can really get in the way of progress. Yeah. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. of trying to work on something because Sometimes you just got to strip yourself down and be like, look, okay, like let's, let's work on those. Let's do this. Whether it's a friendship relationship, whatever it's like, let's, let's get in here. Let's do this. But if that person's not willing 
to to let to, you know to pull their ego their pride all of that aside and just be like all right ground zero let's do it like it's not gonna work yeah 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 no no i totally get that yeah i just think i don't think ego in terms of like i have an ego i think in terms of like i don't know the, the notion of like does it serve me how do you serve me just because we we, we want to possess people like refs if you love somebody even your kids right I love you so much. I don't want I don't, you, I don't want you to leave. I, I don't, don't know if I do, if I think really? like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not saying everybody does, but it is something for people to look at. No, I think it for me, a, like how I grew up, I'm, I'm kind of opposite of that. And I've had opposite experience in relationships where people are like, oh, you're mine. Like if you're dating and you're with me and I'm like, ooh, that, that, that doesn't sit well with me. Like I'm like, you're mine. The guy says that. Yeah. You're yeah. I'm like, uh, no, I, yeah. I'm, it, it just, possession becomes. I don't know. You possess products. You protect, you, you possess things. Yes, you know, agree. people are once again, it's a choice. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like you choose to be a part of it. And like, even with my kids, like I, and we've had this conversation, like, cause you know, your son went off to college and he was like, that's great. I know that I look, I'm not excited about it. My kids are only <laughs> six and eight and I'm already not excited about it. But I am, I think I am my mother's child and I'm raising very independent children. They will be out the door ex as soon as they are able right. and capable. Like they're very independent. And I was the same way. Will you be okay when that moment happens? I will be because I feel like one, I mean, I know you well enough by now, just in our short conversations, like, like you've raised a young man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You've raised someone. And I feel like by that, by that point, I will have raised someone that I'm, if I'm doing my job, like, I feel like I trust you. I trust the decisions you're going to make. I trust what's going to happen. Like mm -hmm. I, I, tr I feel like if you don't, and I'm from the South, so this might be different for you, but speak, like, men in the South will be like, you know, they'll trust their sons to do anything. They always go out. They don't, they have a later curfew. Right. They have, you know, they, if they're dating someone, it's not a big deal. But with girls, like a lot of times the guys, the fathers will be like, oh no, you're not dating until you're like 30. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, what? what the hell is that? And I, I guess I don't like that. Cause it's like, you don't trust your daughter. Then that's on you. You didn't raise a girl to have enough confidence to stand up for herself or you didn't teach her like i'm gonna trust that my daughter and my son will make smart decisions like mm -hmm. you know and if they don't you deal with it life happens but what, like that what, bothers me what is the thing that you we, i mean we all i think we all hope to raise our kids well but you know we miss them when they're gone but mm -hmm. in raising our kids what are your things that you have to make sure that they know it, um, what, what you led with, like when you were saying Jay Balvin, like I, I literally asked my kids every night when we're snuggling and I put in bed, I'm like, are you happy? Uh, and like, if you're not like, what could so make you sweet. happier? No, that's it. That's Do they it. always it's, say yes. No. Like sometimes they'll say, especially the like past two years, like a lot of it and it kills me, but they'll, and I want them to be honest. So I don't, I don't ever say, Oh God, don't tell me that, you know? Um, but a lot of times it would be like, you know, I'm just really sad. You know, I wish mommy and daddy were in the same house. I wish, mm. and they're really honest about it. And that's, and I'm raising that kind of individual. I want you to be honest with me. And I just sit there and I'm like, yeah, I get it. I'm mm. from a divorced family as well. I get it. That's, mm. that sucks, you know, but we're going to work it out. And you are so loved by both of us. And I go through this conversation and I think, I think communicating with them and not treating them, you know, not not treating them like an adult because they're not, but not treating them like a child that they're, they're, you know, they're not small feelings. Those are huge feelings and those are huge emotions. Mm. And so I think that's my thing. I always ask them every night. I'm are like, you are happy? you happy? I was like, what do you have a great, happy day? That's a great It's thing. super simple, but it's, I'm going to ask my kids later, are they happy? Yeah. It's like so important. I don't so ask important. them that enough. I don't ask them. Well, so I do. I do ask them that maybe in different ways. Yeah. But there's things like, I always want my kids, like honesty is a big thing mm -hmm. for me. I don't like my kids that not only sh you shouldn't lie, it's a bad characteristic, but like you shouldn't feel like you have to, you should feel. Then why are you doing it? Yeah. yeah like yeah, what, is, that, what, is, yeah. what do you get out of that? What yeah. Is the, what are you covering? Like why? Yeah. Do I, so I like honesty is a lying big thing. Lying is the worst. I hate lying. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's just, it's exhausting as well. It's just like, it's, gonna, exhausting. It's, gonna, it's exhausting. It's, it's a like, trigger for me, by it's, the way. Oh my God, for all of us, right? It's yeah. just like, oh my God, it's going to come out. I always want my kids to make good decisions about the people that they- Surround I'm, themselves with? Yeah, especially I have one, one is in high school and one just left to college, well, last year. You remember the moments. Mm -hmm. um, 
but like when they're going out on their own, mm -hmm. I always, and I feel like this is not something they tell us growing up enough. Like, especially, well, you've been through heartbreak and heartache and all those things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Me growing up, my first heartbreak, I was like, why did nobody tell me how awful this is? Oh. I felt blindsided by the fact that somebody could hurt you because you made a bad, you picked a bad person. Yeah. Not that you can't get hurt by a good person, but mm. the people you choose your friends, your relationships, you know. They matter. It, it counts. It could literally like ruin your life. Mm -hmm. So make good choices in your friends. Make good choices in the people that you decide you date or you want to leave in your life because people can hurt you if, yeah. if you allow them to. I don't know that I understood that. It took me, I had to like get my ass knocked down a couple of times yeah. to realize, oh, let me be a little tighter with this. I shit. think probably why is that we're very similar. Like even whenever you were talking a minute ago about like you justify, like sometimes it's hard and we're working on like not justifying people's actions, not letting yes. narcissists take hold of you, not letting manipulation happen. Because I, I'm that type of person, like literally I heard in church, like as a kid, like, you know, put yourself in someone else's shoes. You never know what they're going oh through. God. Like, and I took that and just held on tight and was like, okay, so someone would do something real shitty to me. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna take my shoes off. I'm gonna put theirs on. I'll be like, why did that happen? Like, mm. you know, and I would really try and see it from their vantage point. And um, I have enough friends, I think over the years, especially this one back here, Trisha, she is like, you need to stop doing that because yeah. sometimes people are undeserving of that moment at this time. And it's not that necessarily they're a bad person. They're just not where you are. Well, my friend said this to me too when I was I was explaining to one of my friends about this like shift in me after that thing happened with my father where I was like, oh, I'm not going to be like that with people anymore. They were like, no, don't do that. That's actually a great characteristic. That's not the problem. That's literally what my friend tells me. That's You're a good friend. You're yeah. a good friend. That's literally, she's like, don't change you. Wait. My <laughs> friend was a good friend too. He told yeah. me, you're, you're not doing that wrong. That's right what you're doing. You just have to decide what is okay and not okay for you. It's okay to give people that grace mm -hmm. of like, oh man, that's why they're that way. But what you don't do is look away. You decide what works for you and doesn't work for you. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean that... You can have compassion. You can have empathy. You can understand what people. It doesn't mean you doesn't have to. Doesn't mean they're a lot on that tight. It doesn't circle. mean you have to let yeah. it be, be part of your life. Mm -hmm. That was helpful to me because I, it it was like okay. Because it's also you know, a beautiful thing that like God, we wish society would learn a lot of times empathy. I, I mean, that's a right? huge thing that I hope we're all teaching our children. How did you? Um, I mean, we're talking about heartbreak and stuff, but. Um, what does divorce do to you? Like, how does Boy, that shift you? What it is, has to shift you, right? Well, you know what's interesting is I think we grow up, especially I can only speak from like where I grew up in like the South, where I am. Like, basically, I started dating someone like 30. I was like dead. Like, people people are like, you're not married with four kids yet? Uh, <laughs> like, I was like an old maid. <laughs> like, where 30? I'm from. Yeah, at 30 with like no prospects or something. Like, Aww. it's like Jane Austen times. But for me, I never, I, I, I think I felt that pressure. Um, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, oh, I guess, yeah, all my friends, like a lot of my friends have babies, like a lot of my, and I felt that pressure. And then, and then you do, like, I find it's so funny. I, I was just talking to, well, I'm literally listening to my new record and it's being mastered. And a lot of it obviously is about the last two years. And, and it's basically this arc. And I was just listening to the whole record and it's like, there's, there's the magical moments too. You know, mm. there's that whole thing. And that's what I fell in love, like at 30 and then you fall in love and deeply, mm. like, every part of me like every ounce of me like on a level of like whoo want to rip your clothes off that kind of love and that's a good kind of love that's <laughs> yeah. what you want right and and so i fell in love like that and that and so it shows kind of that and then it goes this whole journey and and it it rips you apart you know whenever you you fall in love with someone and it doesn't work when, and when do you know when is the moment you know when do you know it's not working i mean i think to... i think the thing about divorce that you know, especially having it publicized, like it's just, you know, it, and people thinking they know the whole yeah. thing. The hardest part of that is like, it wasn't an overnight decision. Uh, like anyone that's been divorced, like that was years in like, you know, uh -huh. trying to, trying to make, you know, not make it work. Cause I don't want it. I never wanted to be part of something to make it work. I wanted to make it beautiful. I wanted to make it awesome. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it everything it possibly could be. And, and, sometimes that just doesn't happen mm -hmm. and for whatever reason. And the point that I finally was like, 
Woo. I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something different for Mm me. Um, is I literally, I remember, I remember reading this book, it's called Untamed and a friend had given it to me. No, it wasn't my therapist. My therapist gave it to me and she was actually our marriage counselor. (laughs) So you stole Um, the marriage counselor for yourself? I actually kept her. Um, um, Good for you. Yeah, because it was helpful. It was helpful. Like, um, so I think anything that's helping you, you should, you know, keep in your life. But, but she had turned me on to, um, Glennon Doyle. And so did, I think my nanny, she had told me about Glennon Doyle. And, and then there was this book called Untamed and I read it and I was reading it and it was like, Literally, she was talking about her life and she was talking about, um, she goes, you know what? It was the hardest thing for me to do. But I looked at my my daughter. I looked at her and I thought, would I want this marriage for my daughter? Would I want, would I want my daughter to be in this position? Like, is this what I want for her? Mm. Like, would I want this for her? Mm. Then why would I, like, no, I don't. So like, why would I want it for me? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it just kind of changed the, the perspective on it, but it, it's a difficult thing. Like, right. Like you have kids and everybody thinks about that when you have kids, you know, it's like, Oh, I don't want to split my kids. I don't want, I don't want, yeah. I don't want to do that to them. Like, especially oh, if a I'm family. a child of divorce, you know, yeah, you have a family. Exactly. You mm-hmm. don't want, nobody wants to do that. So, you know, it happens, um, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things that that's also, that's a constant, like working on thing after the aftermath. Of you course, because then there's all types of. I mean, I'm not. I've never been legally married. I've been in long relationships. Yeah, but um, but there's I, still the aftermath after the aftermath, that. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's the aftermath yeah. of that, and then all the like you go through the phases, the phases of it. Like uh, that. By the way, every phase is on my next record. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> there is sadness. There is rage. There is, rage. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot. It's because you go through all those emotions, like you. Because you're, there's no, and I, I feel like if you don't, if you don't hit all of those, emo, if you don't have that, then were you really in it? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, I, like I, sometimes I run across people and they're like, oh, I felt like, you know, fine. And I was just like, wait, what? I was like, I, I was destroyed, like on the ground, like crying. Like it's, cause that, that's a loss. That's a, it's a death. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you grieve something that you thought would be forever but you have never been in one of those relationships i have been where no. oh you're not all the way in where you're like when oh you, when you get out you're like whoo i feel better now no no that's what tripped me up so i had never been in love before oh. being married like i'd never i had never experienced that kind of love like before like Got he it. was like my first like fall in love Ooh. yeah so mm-hmm. that that was real and i mean honestly even when you can't stand the person sometimes, you still, there's still always, I mean, in my circumstance, I don't know that you, cause my kids ask me all the time, they're like, well, so you don't love him anymore? And I'm like, no, I was like, I don't, I don't know if that goes away. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, to tr- cause you've truly known someone on an intimate level, you know, even if you're not happy with decisions that were made with you or whatever, or maybe things they did, there's a level of understanding or justifying or whatever you want to call it right. that you can't escape because you were, you know, madly deeply in love with this person connected to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think you might always be connected in some sense. Well, obviously we're connected. We have children, children together too, yeah. but, but, um, but I don't want to, I guess my thing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm not the person to be like, Oh, well, it, you know, Oh, it never had or nothing like that. Da, da, da. No, it was beautiful for a minute. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It was awesome for a minute. And then, what and is, that's okay. It just didn't work out. What do you think? Because God, I, I would imagine even watching this right now, the amount of women who are in the trenches of that. Like yeah. you're sitting here and you're fine now and you've, you're at an 11 in your happiness. Yeah, and well, that took years. <laughs> no, that I'm saying. Yeah. That, so I'm, I, I can imagine yeah. you know, somebody might even be watching us now and like in the trenches of that. Like, mm-hmm. what do you say to that person? What is the... Thing. Well, okay, so I had this interesting conversation when I was in New York, and I one of the interviews I did was with um, Hillary and Chelsea Clinton, oh. and it was interesting because they did this show called Gutsy, and, and uh-huh. this lady just flat out asked Hillary, like, man, so you stayed, and like, just went there in the interview with her, and I was like, man, I was like, was that, and I started having this conversation with Hillary, and it was interesting because, you know, everybody has their own I, I know nothing about your relationship with who you're with. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like people can see from the outside, but if you're not in the relationship, you don't know it. Mm-hmm. So like some sometimes what I did is not the answer, you know, for mm-hmm. everyone. That was the answer for me. 
But, you know, it was interesting because Hillary was talking about how mine was stay. Like that was, that was my, that was what I needed. That's what I knew was right for me. Mm. And I found that very powerful because mm -hmm. I think we can all be very judgy on like if somebody is especially for her my god yeah, yeah oh, a lot of people though yeah, even even people true. we know in our lives yeah, that aren't sure. you know oh yes that was probably horrible because it was in the public eye but i just mean even even people like in our lives that aren't in the public eye like a lot of people will be quick to judge because it's a real easy to do yeah. from the peanut gallery yeah you know but it's just like what i did in my life i don't think everybody like having a hard time in their marriage right now should get divorced. I think that's not the first yeah, thing you should do. I didn't mean that in terms of like what people should do in their marriage. I'm just saying, what do you do picking yourself up off the floor when you're on oh. the floor crying or you're in the trenches of hurt and uh, disappointment and all the things that mm -hmm. when you said you were on the floor and like, what, what is the thing that picks you up? What is the thing that uh, that's we We're coming back to who you surround yourself with. So, I uh, mean, I, I do not think that I would have made it out of that without first of all my therapist i'll be real mm -hmm. like i mean she gave me tools that i did not know like even little sayings like i just told you of like not attending every argument or not trying to fix everything or not you know or being okay with like my kids i i i think what i saw with my parents divorce like i was just like i don't want to do that with my kids like so i never let them see me cry I never let them you know i was very adamant about just keeping it real polished mm -hmm. and you know and she even the advice from her like and they're trained professionals that give you tools to like navigate mm -hmm. hard situations, right? So, um, and it, it what really- What did she tell you to do about that? She told me, uh, yeah, she told me like, it's okay to let, allow your kids to express empathy towards you. It's okay for your kids to see you have a hard time. Mm -hmm. It's better for your kids- It's more truthful. To see you mm -hmm. honestly. Like, and, it, and not that I, like, I don't cry all the time for them, but you know, there were a couple of times when you know, I'd be in my room and they, they would just see my face and my daughter would be like, oh, what's going on? And I'm like, well, today was a hard one, mm -hmm. you know? And then she'd be like, oh man, she was like, so is it, do you, you know, she'd flat out ask me, oh, do you miss dad? I was like, well, of course I do. It was like, you miss daddy too. And we'd have conversations and, and you know, not, not anything that she shouldn't have been of talked to about, but like, but you know, just being honest with her about how I was feeling. And I, I that took time for me. And that's, a lot of work because mm -hmm. that's really hard for me to do because some of that can be triggering from like, oh, I wish I hadn't seen some of the stuff when I was kid. So I have to like navigate what I feel like is appropriate mm -hmm. or inappropriate. So, but I, I would not have gotten through that without, and honestly, uh, my therapist, my friends and family and music. I know that sounds yeah. very cliche as an artist and it no, sounds very not artist the type of artist that you are. But uh, that's the, like, if I, uh, if I didn't have the outlet, I didn't even know if I was going to release an album because I was like, I don't know if I want to talk about this. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you write it all out and you get it all out and it's all there. And it's like, man, it took me a minute. I was like, you know, and I wrote most of them like two years ago, but it's like, I needed that. I wrote so much, like mm. whatever your art form is or however you express yourself, whatever your outlet is, like, that's what that was for get me. Getting it out. Getting it out. And I'm Oh, I can't, I don't know how people go through something devastating, any kind of loss or grieving process without that, some, having some without kind of outlet. outlet. Yeah. And, and that was really helpful for me. Mm -hmm. So therapy, um, an outlet music or whatever yeah. your thing is. But friends is. and family, man, friends relying on those people you surround yourself. That's why it's important. Like who do you mm -hmm. surround yourself with? Are those people you want to be like, mm -hmm. you know, are those people that you look up to, you admire? Mm -hmm. They should be. You know, right, so. or why are you holding space? Yeah, around right. Here? <laughs> why, yeah, why am I giving you? Space why are you here? taking? Why are you living rent free here? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How old are your kids? <laughs> Six and eight. Oh my God, there's. So, you know. God, they're so smart and such good questions. Well, she, it's more my <laughs> eldest. It's more the. She's gonna be a talk show host. Yeah, child. no, she's she's very. <laughs> well, it's so funny too because I think kids, man, they they. And you know this, they will read into, they, yeah. they pick up, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they, they see. It's pretty great being a parent. I love being a parent. I feel like it's we, hard, but I love it. It is hard. What do mm. you think? The, what has been the hardest thing for you? Just constantly trying to be the best version of myself. Right. right? Like, I mean, cause we all trip up. We all have tired days. We all get short tempered. We all, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's like, it's just trying to be the best version of yourself. They, they cause they will hold you accountable. <laughs> They'll be like, wait a minute, but remember. And I'm like, don't no, that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, cute. I, yeah, it's that, I think, I think that's it, man. Just really 
trying to be, which is awesome because it also makes you a better human, I think, mm -hmm. if you're doing it right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I keep, I keep thinking about you saying that you're an 11. Yeah. 11 is a fucking good number. It's a great number. Do you, is that like all the time or is that just today? No, I think honestly, I'm, I'll be real with you. It was like a four before I went on vacation this Oh, summer. recently. Because like I said, I just kept busy, kept busy, kept busy. I was, I was shutting off. I was uh -huh. like, I can't. Because I knew, you ever see that Friends episode where Bruce Willis, like Jennifer Aniston, finally gets him to cry? She's like, it's so weird. He doesn't cry. And then all of a sudden he just like I vaguely cries all the time. <laughs> like I was like, I was like, if I let, if I even open it creak up, creak this door, like if there's just a tiny bit of space, it's just going to come gushing out. Because, you know, all those things, it's something that matters to you and something that is so, you're so deeply affected by. And I'm so emotional in general. Like it. Yeah, I was like, I can't. I got to hold back. I got to smile. I got to do my work. Mm -hmm. I got to be busy. And then I was not well. And then I took that time. I knew I needed it. My kids needed it. So I said no to everything. It was like, I don't know, two and a half months, three months of like me just literally in the mountains, four-wheeling, just. And that helped you. Just, yeah. It brought you back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. Mm -hmm. It's hard to figure that out sometimes for people. Because sometimes you need thing? to create that space thing? to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And to see things, to have clarity, I think. For sure. Yeah. I knew I was going to like this. This? Aww. What? This conversation? Yeah. Oh, I love that. I knew it. I came, I was telling her, I was like, <laughs> I was like I'm so excited to do this. You're I was so like, cute. No, because I, love it, that. I just love a real conversation. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Me too. I appreciate yeah. it. Where, I'm so excited. For where you. are you, where are you right now? Uh, where are you with love now? Like what is in the level of the things that you care about in life, like in terms of its importance in your life? and As in a relationship kind of yes. love? That kind of love? Yes. So I I grew up where it's like, you know, you're, you're supposed to graduate high school, you find someone you love, you have kids, get a job, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like I think that's beautiful. I think that's awesome. Um, I always knew it, I was not going to have – I'm just more of a gypsy. I just knew I wasn't going to have a normal, like whatever normal was where I grew up. I knew it didn't fit for me. Um, I did fall in love. It was more shocking to me. My mother was still shocked. Like, like everyone was shocked. Like, so I did though. I fell in love. I did it. I fell in love so deeply. I experienced that. I feel so much gratitude for that. Having had felt that, you know, mm -hmm. not everybody gets to feel that That's in a true. life. And, um, and I, but I really do like truly love being single. Like I, yes, I do. Like, I, I know it's so weird, but I love well, what part like, about it. What part? Okay. Like plans changing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, like, okay, I, we were supposed to do something else this one weekend coming up. And then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? That didn't feel right. I was like, something wasn't ready. I was like, let's just go do something else. And I'm very, I'm very spontaneous. Mm. I like that. And I'm very much a gypsy. I mean, my God, I've been on the road since I was 19. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, there's a reason for it. Right. Like, I enjoy it. Like, a lot of people crave stability, but a lot of people's stability is that spontaneity. Mm. And I like that. And I, I like my bed. <laughs> I like my routine. I like, like, I think it's awesome. And maybe one day, I'm not like saying I'm, I'm against it. I won't be getting married, but like, ever, ever. Really? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've heard it here. Like, <laughs> don't even play think this about back. It. Yeah, I'm just don't saying. Don't even think yeah. about it. No, it's just yeah. because I don't, and I even, and you, you can ask my ex. Like, I, I never, I was never, you didn't I feel that. like you, I feel like that, that has been like in my life, you know, I've been through a couple of divorces, my own family, like as a, as a kid. And it's like, to me, you can be in love. I would, I would love to fall in love. Like, I would love to find someone and fall in love and do that thing. But I, I have children and that's why I say, it's not that I'm like against marriage. Mm. I'm saying I have children. I didn't have the most positive experience with step situations and like remarrying and I didn't have the most positive situation growing up. I will not do that to my children. Mm. Um, and so I, I, that's what I mean. It's not so much because I'm like against marriage. I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm love. I would love to fall in love, but I don't, I don't want like another dude in my house with my children. I just think sometimes, I just think it didn't work out whenever I was young. And not to say that it wouldn't work out, but mm. I just think 
it's okay just to fall in love. And I love my children. I love my time with them. I love my work. I love my dogs more than most humans. <laughs> I love, I love my life. Yeah. I'm so happy. I said I'm 11 emotionally. Like mm. I, I, I love my life right now. It took a minute. It took some work and I got it and I got it back. And and I no longer have those like preconceived things that, you know, society tells you have to do in order to like whatever grow up, like especially from the South. Like I just, I don't have that. Like I'm, I'm happy. Really? Yeah. It's, there's a freedom in it. And, and, and I don't, I don't want someone, yeah, like in my house around my kid. I'm not, I'm not down with that. So, but I would love to fall in love. Yeah. Love is beautiful. Like I've experienced love. So that's, I love passion. I love love. I no love fear about it. I don't really have, I, I don't think I have fear about it. Mm. I just realize, like I have this, <laughs> I have this whole song called Red Flag Collector mm. on my next album because I refuse to be that anymore. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, get, break this down for me. This is good. So Red Flag Collector is like, <laughs> basically it's like, oh, I'm just over here collecting red flags. Like, like why? And it, I, I just refuse to do that. So I think I've been better about like Trisha, I've been better <laughs> about, about, about seeing it, you know, and being like, Ooh, that's not good. So no. So, okay. So you see a red, like what's a red flag. I'm trying to think what's my red flag. Someone being like manipulative in a conversation. And I'm like, mm. yeah, I don't like that. Oh. And I'm like, okay, no, I'm good. Okay, that's a like, good it's one. like, Let me think you one. didn't need to do that. Let's bust some down because people probably need to know some of these red flags. That's a good one. Yeah. You, you probably have a bunch cause you no, just manipulation a is a, yeah. Manipulation. manipulation. Is a, yeah. I for a red flag for me sometimes. Is if um, liar, <laughs> it's, a liar is a huge red flag. Yeah. Also, a red flag for me is somebody who has way too many friends, and they're all his best. they his best friends. I feel like when some a red flag can also be if they have no friends. If they have no friends. Yeah. Also, just no saying, friends. That's also a red ends. flag. Yeah. Also, could be a red flag. But sometimes, if, if somebody's friends with everybody, yeah, I feel like how can you be re a real friend to anybody if you're. You know what I'm saying? No, no, they're friendly for me. with, like, I could be friendly, friendly. with everybody. No, of course, friendly. I feel like you only have really like, room for, like, a few people on that kind of level. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, so you only, If you yeah. need too many, for then, uh, That's a know. networker. That's a red flag for me. Yeah. It's a red flag. That should be a red flag for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> red flag. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? Because that might be a ladder climber as well. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely... But again, no friends, also a problem. Yep, also not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's a red flag for me? Because I hated this. I, I don't like this in men. Uh, um, complainers. Like chronic complainers. Oh, complainers? Yeah, somebody. Well, that could who, be men and women. But somebody who always finds like the negative. Like I could be like, Ooh. you have seven amazing things going on in your life. Why are you? Yep. Why is this the thing? And if you see that a couple of times, that should be a flag. Because that means yeah. that person likes being in that state. Yeah. It's not just something that's going what I'm on. saying. Some people with that generation, they, they don't even know how to exist without it. Yes. They don't know how. Well, you got to watch for those flags. Yeah. Because otherwise then you're in a relationship while you're with doing somebody. The work, they aren't maybe. <laughs> give, me, give me another yeah. one. Give me another red flag. Um, These are good. I don't like like it, any kind of, this is for people I work with, people in relationships, people, friends and family. I do, I, uh, insecure people. Mm. Ooh. Red flag. <laughs> and not only a red flag, just exhausting as yeah. hell. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, I don't have time to do all these things plus be your daily cheerleader. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't do that. That's not fair. To be supportive is one thing, you know, of you're friendships or people, but like to have to like every day be like, you're amazing. It's like, whoa. I feel like you, maybe a younger you might've been a, a little too susceptible to that. Like, you're so friendly and warm and you talk to me, you probably, a good, couldn't you're a good ear. So I feel like you might've been open to people taking advantage of that. Is that a good assessment? <laughs> Your friend is giggling. Yeah. Because I have a friend, one of my good, good friends. She's like one of my favorite people because she, she cares so deeply about everybody. She'll help everybody out of a crisis and she'll, um, and she just, she stay on the phone. Oh, this person's going, and she's just a good friend. Like mm -hmm. a really just good friend. Sometimes like you're a better friend than me. Like I'm not getting up at three in the morning and going because you're like, you know, she's just a yeah. good friend. And Nurture. I always had to tell her like, it's really a beautiful thing about you, but also be really careful because then you're also a magnet mm -hmm. to people who need a lot all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you're drained. She's you you're drained well. because yeah. you're, you gave everything you got to everybody, to everybody else. Yeah. And people who love you shouldn't 
want you to, shouldn't want to do that to you. I know. It's also, it's, it's about, I guess, the people we attract and the people we allow in. Yes. Right? So yeah, exactly. Still working on that. So the same thing. If you're too needy, if you're like insecure, I say that to say, beware be of like, even friends, not just relationships. No, that's like, what I mean. Like I'm saying across the board. Across it's just, the board. For, first of all, I'm also just getting too old. Like I'm just like, look, I get it. Like I'm not, I'm not even mad at you about it. Like I'm just like, I, <laughs> Like, I don't have, like, I, yeah. I'm taking care of two humans. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm living my life. I'm trying to do my best at what I do in my life. I'm like, I can be there a bit, but I can't. That That's the thing. I will say, too, another thing that um, I learned in therapy was, it, like, one day she was like, hey, why don't you try and treat yourself how you treat everybody else? Mm. And I was like, why are you coming at me with that? Like, I was like, don't you come in here with honesty? I was like, so it, it's a hard thing when, mm -hmm. you know, you, I have always been, I'm a, I was a total people pleaser. I'm still a people pleaser. You know, it's just, I have to watch myself and be like, yeah, wait, I can't do that. Isn't that a great moment when you, when you come to that realization? Somebody said that to me. I think it was a therapist actually too, years ago. I was going through something and I was like, this thing, I can't get out of it. I can't get out of this relationship. And if if I do, he's going to fall apart. This is going to fall apart. That's going to fall mm. apart. And she thought, and she said to me, she's like, you keep talking about everybody else. She's like, why is what everybody else, how everybody else is going to be affected more important than how you are being affected? Why? Why? She said, I'm not telling you to care about yourself more than everybody, which would be great. I just want you to at least put yourself on in the e mix. Equal. Like, just care mix. about yourself as much as you care about. Yeah. It. And something about that was like, but it's funny though because it's simple right but it's a real thing it's but like we're taught is like i was like in like especially growing up in church like yeah. it's never about you it's always about others like it's always about <laughs> I say, you know, yeah i know but that's how i was no, raised I like so it's just like you're raised like it's never about you or even any you know any time you win something or anything and that's not you that's god and i'm like that's beautiful i love that that I, it is something bigger than me i love that mentality but at the same time if we're always out here thinking about everybody else, like it's like at some point you do need to think about yourself. And here's the thing too, why Not at some point, I know, I know at all the time you should, yeah. but, it, but if you're in that bad, you know, that habitual pattern of doing that, like at some point you got to get out of that. You got to yeah. break that cycle. And, and for me, breaking that cycle was my children. Like I, I am a way better parent when I take care of myself as well, like the oxygen mask mentality. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, you do have to take care of yourself in order for that to like trickle down. For right. Sure. And so I think that's the thing we go we'll run ourselves ragged, like trying to please, 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 please. And then you're on empty. I did like, you have a friend like that. And I, I have a friend too. Um, I won't say his name just in case he doesn't want to be named, but, <laughs> but I, I have a friend and I, I do, I ask him all the time. I'm just like, so when do you like do something for yourself? Cause he is, cause I'm almost like, are you afraid to be still? Like, are you afraid to not do for mm. others? Are you, what are you? Cause it kind of seems like you're always doing for everyone else. What does that mean? Like, why aren't you like, is there something you're running from? And he mm. was like, oh, he was like, <laughs> Damn. he was like, why are you saying that? I was like, cause it kind of seems that way. You're always, I mean, literally a person that would give the shirt off his back, like always helpful, always there. Like you got to make sure you're, those people are deserving and would do the same for you. You know, yeah. put yourself somewhere, somewhere in that equation. Yeah. What do you think your overall, like, I mean, you have so many phases of your life. Your career has been amazing. You're clearly a great mom. What do you think in this grand scheme of it, like your purpose here is, have you thought about that? I'm sure in all that therapy is said to have come up. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. And I don't know if you feel this, but like, I, f I feel like, you know, from, you know, ever since I was young, I knew my purpose was music. I didn't think I would ever be like a lead singer, like where I am right now. My mm -hmm. goal was honestly to be a background singer because I liked a lot of different styles of really? music. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to just be able to sing with all these different artists, you know, and be able to kind of tip, you know, dip my toe into different genres. I love that. Um, it took a minute, but I ended up getting to do that with my career. But, um, but I always thought my purpose, yeah, was, was music. music and I thought it was singing and, and I thought that was how I would, and I think it is a bit of my purpose. Um, but I will say I never, I always say like the talk show was like a dream I didn't know existed. Mm. And even as a mom, like purpose wise, like I feel like I've, I've been given these two little gifts that I get to like help try and mold and become the best versions of themselves and 
and all the friendships that come into your life and, and you feel like, you know, you can learn from and maybe help them too. But I feel like there's not one. Like, I feel like we always think like we have one purpose. So mm. I feel like all of those are purpose. And I feel like mm. we always think like in terms of like, it's this one thing and it's not like our purpose is to keep growing mm -hmm. and, and to become the best version of ourselves. Um, and I am one of those people that loves working. Like I love doing I the work. Tell, I, love I know it. I love it. I'll I read any it. book you give me. Like, I love it. I, I think it's, I just think it's intriguing. Not that yeah. I feel like I'm lacking anything. I just think like, it's, it's intriguing to know like what has helped somebody else and what might, you know, a little tidbit I might take and that might help me on my way. Like, yeah, for sure. but I don't know if there's one purpose, I guess. I think I have a lot of purpose. That's probably actually a better way to live because, you know, sometimes we put all our purpose or we think our purpose is this one thing in life. And then and what then, if it goes away? And something knocks your ass down yeah. and then stops that. And then what? You have no purpose? Yeah, because people are like, oh, what if you lost your voice? I go, well, I guess I'd do something else. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I, you know, I love singing. I love that it's my outlet. I love talking obviously y'all can tell you're gonna have to edit this down but like <laughs> never but um but i just i, I love the fact that you came from your talk show and then came here is really fascinating and i'm so and i have two shows too and i all week long like i've been doing shows like I, but i love talking i love yeah. it and so i i don't know it's just, i don't i don't ever think like i'm not just a singer i'm not just a talk show i'm not just i'm many things and i think that people should not because i'm i know you have friends like this in the mm. industry where all of a sudden their career isn't what it was mm -hmm. and they have like a full on identity crisis yeah. and you're like, Oh my God, like how sad, like, why do you feel like this is your, this is not your one, this is your more than this one thing. Right. Like, and you see it, of course. but they can't. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not going to end up like that. Yeah. A lot of that happens too, as we get older, because your career, you know, your career goes in waves, Ebbs and flows. even, even if you're super successful, yeah. you're going to, it's just going to, so as you get older, that happens a lot, but also age, especially for women, mm -hmm. um, sometimes sends people in a, like they start unraveling. <laughs> sometimes it's the career is not going well, or sometimes just the aging of it all. I know. Isn't it interesting though? Like I've had this conversation with a couple people in the industry and I'm just like, it's okay that like uh, everyone's career has a, not an end, but like just kind of like it fades, it a fades a bit, right? But you know why is because then while that's happening with you, someone else is killing it and it's their moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is that not okay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and do you know how many people would have killed to have had what you had in that mm -hmm. moment? Yeah. You know, like, it's like, why? Yeah, but sometimes people become addicted to that moment. That's what I'm saying. But I think they become addicted to it because they that's their identity. Mm. It's like they derive their like validation and like who they are. And it's like, whoa, no. <laughs> like, I think that I love what I do. Like, I'm, I don't think I know. I love what I do. I love that I'm that I'm blessed and I'm able to do things. But that's not like who I am at my core. You know, mm -hmm. like that's my family. That's my friends. That's my kids. That's my dogs. Once again, I love my dogs. <laughs> really love your um, dogs. I do. Um, they woke me up this way. They're my alarm clocks. The one was like right here in my arm. One was like in my oh. face looking at me. Um, but like, I, I don't know. I just think we, we are more than that. And I think I, I don't know about you, but I feel like whatever belief people have and like why we're here or whatever, I do think that you have to think that you're a part of something that's bigger than just you. And really stepping outside that ego and the, like yourself is really helpful. It's freeing because you don't put so much pressure on yourself. Yeah. And then you want to look at people and be like, you're not that important. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> not to be a jerk about it, but it's like, we're all not that individually that important. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, I think you're putting way too much on it. What type of like old lady are you going to be? Are you oh, not going <laughs> to? My sister and I talk about this all the time. You and, and my friends. Yeah. I'm going to be a golden girl. I'm just going to be you like are. killing it, like with some games <laughs> and maybe a drink or two. Listen, um, <gasps> you said games. I love games. I know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know. You unfairly beat me in two games on your <laughs> yeah. show. I'm the same way. Unfairly. I feel like... like I don't how know, was, how I don't funny know. was it that Lynn didn't get his own thing? It was Lynn ridiculous. <laughs> but listen, how funny... 
<laughs> so listen, could we like, I don't know how many times we'll see each other if our cross or pass, our yeah. pass will cross. Well, I hope they do. You better come back to my show. I will come, come to your show. show. <laughs> I would love to stay in touch. But also like, if for some reason our worlds go different ways. Okay. I would love to, like, when we're golden girls and golden ladies, mm -hmm. we should have, like, a game night. Game night. No, I'm telling you, I'm... I'm we should have old lady game nights. Old lady game nights. I'm down. I'm Please. 40 and I'm down to start them now. Okay, like, right. I'm like, yeah. I love... I love... That's my sister and I talk about all the time because I have this... I have a ranch in Montana and I... And it's, like, the most beautiful place ever. Like, just... It's just peaceful. That sounds and, lovely. And I, yeah, I have a little two bedroom <laughs> cabin and I love just sitting there. And like I had this whole summer with my sister and my nephew. I basically spent the whole summer with them and my kids. And, um, and it was just awesome. Like we just played games. We went on four wheelers. We just, we just experienced life together in like the most simplest form. Right. So that's the um, best. Yeah. Just like walking along the water on the property. Like it's just, it was just awesome. And that's how I'm going out. Mm -hmm. So know that if some accident happens to me, I'm pissed <laughs> that I didn't get that. Because <laughs> yeah. you have a plan for that. I have that. a plan. And I honestly, I don't have the plan because I, I, we have this whole thing like in our group too. It's like, you know, use the good China. Like, so like, that's why, you know, I'm not saving my, oh, I'm going to save this purse for when I do so, or I'm going to save this outfit or save this, you know, I'm going to save my this retirement rand or whatever. No, I'm going to do that every summer. And yeah. I think you should be doing it now. Oh, yes. Yeah, because we always think about retirement. Like, we all aren't promised that. So, like, make sure you're getting that in. Now. Now. I love that. Give me that flowers advice. now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, give everyone flowers. That They're flowers now. Now. Yeah. Have game nights now. <laughs> game nights, yes, yes. No. Or dinners. We started, We look, we've been doing good. We've been, like, implementing real life. Usually I just work, like, right before this because I like to stay busy. But now I'm like... We go out to dinner, Wait, like whether it's the band. Yeah, I was go. gonna say, give me the real life, how you implement yeah. real life. We do. Like, I, my therapist got for the longest time. She kept saying, um, "It was interesting actually, because she kept she kept saying, look, can you please just take one night a week? Like, get a babysitter, take one night a week.' And and I just never did it, because honestly, I didn't realize how depressed I was. I didn't realize uh -huh. how sad I was. Like, so I I think I didn't want to do that because I didn't want anyone to ask me like any kind of question we've been talking about now because I wasn't ready yeah so um, if I would have said how happy are you on a scale of one to ten I would have probably just started crying <laughs> <laughs> that's real <laughs> so I wasn't ready for that so so I think the once I got back and I had time and space and I really worked some stuff out like you know this summer and made time for me and um I, ca I came back and I was like look I was like we're doing it I was like once we we've been doing something either going to dinner with people like um hanging out just with the girls like after work just talking like you know just experience of going to shows like we've just been doing stuff and that's important just real. going to the beach yeah. like in a weekend or two it's not this week next weekend like we're, we're you know we're really like doing it i'm like use the good china now let's have a let's you, have a good time use the good china yeah what was the other thing i said i was gonna steal from you i don't even have china i love that i use that reference i just have like these really cute anthro plates that all don't match or whatever like, but you use them but i use them use them <laughs> okay so those are my takeaways a couple yeah uh, after whenever i have one of these conversations with somebody i tend to it stay they stay with me which is yeah. why i love them it's like yeah these conversations stay with me there'll be, there'll be something from every episode that i've done and i and I'll, and it comes back to me like uh, something that somebody said so mm -hmm. I, I don't know what yours will be because it'll happen after yeah but sitting right here definitely i'm not attending every party <laughs> yeah don't, and don't <laughs> attend, attend every argument part. yeah or, or argument yeah and what was the second thing and use the good time. oh and use the good china, use the good china is the now. second one yeah and i'll and once a week for real life yeah in but that's life. why I love like conversations like this. That's it's, it's a cool show you're doing because Thanks. small talk is for shallow people, in my opinion. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. and I like the deep end. So you, yeah, so this is like deepened material. So congratulations, thank you, thank you baby. Yeah. You left us some with some jewels, some gems yeah. today for us. Well, to you're keep. welcome. Brought to you by my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can book her. Via, yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> Everybody, she's should have, everybody should have a therapist. Yeah, people should. And people that say they don't need one, you do, and you're making others have to go. <laughs> For sure, and making your life harder for for yeah. your partners and your I remember friends. someone was like, "Oh yeah, I never needed to go." I'm like, "That's because you're sending us there." <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I adore you. Game night soon. Game night. Thank you so much. I know. So I enjoyed you. this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I will not attend every party. Not attend every argument. Argument. I'm sorry. You want it to be a party. I you do. just don't want to go to parties party? either. You know. I don't want to say party. Oh, I won't attend every argument. But I'm glad I attended today. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Stitch it on a pillow. <laughs> see what I did? See what I see how I wrapped it you up did. there? Nicely with a bow. Nicely with a bow. <laughs> 
I'm Kelly Clarkson in real life.